In this video, we are going to explore the use of timers in Blazor WebAssembly, and also we are going to use iDisposable to dispose the resources used by a component that we will create. For that, we are going to create a new project. We are going to select Blazor app. We will name it Rock, Paper, and Scissors, since what we are going to do is that we are going to create a Rock, Paper, and Scissors game. Let's click on Create. And we're going to select a Blazor WebAssembly application. And we are not going to click on ASP.NET Core Hosted since we do not need an ASP.NET Core server. Now let's click on Create. And this will create our project. And now what we're going to do is that we're going to open our index component. We will clean it and we will start working. As we said, what we're going to do is that we're going to build a game of rock, paper and scissors. The first thing that we need is three images, one for rock, another for paper, and the last one for scissors. So let's go to the Solution Explorer, let's open our project, open folder in File Explorer, and we will have this. Let's go to the www root and let's paste the following images, paper, rock, and scissors. We will use those images in our project. Now let's go back here and let's start creating our application. We will start with a header, rock, paper, and scissors, and we will have a play again button. And let's create the initial structure of our application. We're going to create a div. In this div, we're going to display the selection of the opponent. So let's say a style, display flex, we will use flexbox, justify content center, we want it in the middle of the screen, and we will want some margin, 20 pixels, and for now, we're just going to hard code an image here. We'll say paper JPEG and we will say class image. And now we're going to display the images of the user, the three options that our user have, which are rock, paper, and scissor, of course. Let's remove this margin. And now for now, we're going to hard code our three images, which are the options that the user has to use. It is going to have these two classes and let's clone this and let's say rock and scissors. Now let's create these CSS classes. For that, we're going to go to the www root CSS. We can use the site CSS or we can create our custom CSS if we want. But I'm going to use this one. I will say image. We'll give it a width of 1200 pixels. Same for the height, and we're going to make a small transition, and we need a selectable image class. Transform, we're going to make it so that when we hover over the image, it will grow a little bit, and cursor pointer. And we need a semicolon here, and we need hover here. And now let's press Ctrl F5 to run the application to see what we have. So as you can see, we have this, though these images are too close together. So we will separate them a little bit. This here should be a space around. Now let's compile the application again. Let's go back here, refresh, and this is better. As you can see, these are the images that represent the options of the user to play. And this is the image of the opponent. Now let's go back to Visual Studio. And let's give this button some style. We'll make it button button info. And now let's work on the functionality of our game. Let's think about what we need. Here, what we want to have is the images rock, paper, and scissors changing in a loop. So for that, we need a functionality that runs at intervals. So for that, we need a timer. With a timer, we can execute a method at intervals. Let's use a timer here, let's say timer, timer, and we need a namespace. For that, we're going to come here and we'll say using system timers. And so we have the timer type here. We're going to use a lifecycle method. For that, we will say protected, overwrite, void, uninitialized. So that here, we can initialize the timer. So timer equal new timer. Timer interval, of course, we can define an interval 
after which a method will be executed. So we want to execute a method every 500 milliseconds. What method do we want to execute? Well, let's create it. It's a private void timer on elapsed. And we need the following signature. We need to have an object sender and elapsed event arcs E. And now we can say timer elapsed and we can assign this method timer on elapsed and we can start the timer timer start so this means that after 500 milliseconds this method is going to be executed at intervals so let's see an example let's say console write line let's say executed and let's compile the application and see this working let's go back here let's refresh the page let's press f12 and as you can see we have executed and it is executing every half a second. Now, if we go to the counter component, you can see that our timer is still executing. This is a problem because it means that the resources of the timer has not been disposed. In order to handle that, we have to use the interface iDisposable. Our component must implement the iDisposable interface so that we can dispose the timer. So let's do that. Let's go back to Visual Studio. So to solve this problem, we are going to use the interface at is possible. In order to define an interface for a component, we have to use the implements directive. And here we will put at is possible. At is possible tells us that we have to implement a dispose method. So let's do that. Let's come here and let's say void dispose. And we will say if the timer is not null, then we are going to dispose the timer. We can dispose the timer because if you take a look here and you see on component, you can see that it implements a disposable. Therefore, we can say timer dispose so that the timer will get disposed. Now let's compile the application and see that this fixes our problem. We have a problem here because we need to make this public. Now let's compile the application again and it works. So let's go back to Google Chrome and let's press F12. And as you can see, we have executed being printed in the console. And if we go to the counter component, as you can see, it is stopped. And if we go back to the index component, it again restarts. If we go away, it stops. So we have fixed the issue. Now let's continue with our game. Let's go back here. And what we are going to do is that we are going to create a class and two enums. Let's start by creating the enums. Let's go to here. We can create a folder which, will, which we will call helpers. Helpers. And we will create first an enum. New item. And we will name it option. Rock, paper, scissors. It will be an enum. And it will have rock, paper, scissors as the three options of the game. Let's create another enum here. New class. We'll name it game status. And this will be victory, loss, and draw. And we have to make this an enum. And finally, let's create a new class, which we will call game. Or better, we will name it hand because it will represent the hand of the user or the option selected so for this we will say public option rps option rps this represents what the user selected whether rock paper or scissor now we need to know what does this option wins against two so we will say wins against so for example, if we have scissors here, then scissors wins against paper. And now let's say option RPS, the same but loses against. So if we have scissors, scissors loses against rock. And now let's create a method that is going to handle a game. So we're going to say game status, play against, and we will say hand opponent hands so we are going to play against an opponent 
we're going to say if our option, whatever we choose, we can actually name this as selection, which I think is more clear. Selection equal to opponent hand selection. If they are the same, then it is a draw. So we're going to say game status draw. But if loses against is equal to the opponent's hand or the opponent's hand selection, then it means we lost. So we will say return game loss. And finally, if it is neither case, then it means we win. So if our opponent choose whatever we lose against, then it means we lost. And if it is in a draw, and if it is in a loss, then it is a victory for us. Now let's create a list of all the possible hands. We're going to do that in the index component. Let's go here. Above timer, we're going to say list hand. And in order to have access to the hand class, we need a using statement. So we can say using rock, paper, and scissors helpers. And now let's say hands. This is really important because our opponent is going to iterate through these hands so that way we can create the effect of the rock, paper, and scissors images changing in an infinite loop. So let's say hand, let's say selection. This can be paper. Paper loses against scissors and wins against rock. We also need the image. So we're going to create here an image property. And now here we will say image equal to paper JPEG. And let's do the same for rock and scissors. We will say rock. Let's put a semicolon here. And so as we said, what we want is the opponent to be iterating through these hands that we have here. So for that, what we're going to do is that in the uninitialized method, we are going to define that the hand of the opponent is going to be the first hand, so we're going to say hand here, opponent hand, and here we will say opponent hand equal to hands, the first hand, and then down here in timer on elapse, we want the opponent iterating over the hands that we have here. So we're going to say int index opponent hand equal to zero, the first one. So we're going to say here index opponent hand equal to, we are going to add one and we're going to use the modulo operator hand count. So the opponent hand will be either zero, one or two, rock, paper or scissors. We're going to say hands and index opponent hands. This value here is going to be 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. So effectively, we are going to be iterating over these three hands that we have here. And we need to invoke the state has changed method to let Blazor know that a change has occurred and it needs to update the component. We do this because we are on a timer on elapsed method, which is outside of the life cycle of Blazor. Blazor doesn't know what it is occurring here, so we need to use the state has changed to let Blazor know that something has changed. And now what we're going to do is that we're going to come up here and instead of hard coding this image here, we're going to say opponent hand image, since this is going to be changing every 500 milliseconds. And here we don't need to hard code the three images, but we can iterate over the hands. Let's put this one here and let's say hand image. And we can delete this too. And now we can compile the application to at least see what we're getting. Let's go to Google Chrome. Let's close this. Let's refresh the page and let's go to the index component. And as you can see, we have that this image is changing continuously between rock, paper and scissors. Though it is a little bit slow. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go here and I'm going to reduce the interval to 100 milliseconds. Then I'm going to recompile the application. Let's go back here. Let's refresh the page. And as you can see, this is better. And now let's finish our game. What we need now 
is to execute a function when we click on one of these images and then that function is going to play the game against the opponent's hand. So let's go back here and let's create a new onClick handle here. Let's say onClick and let's use a lengthy expression. Let's say select hand and we're going to pass the current hand in which we are at. And now let's create this method, select hand. Let's come here and let's say private void select hand, hand, hand. So we are going to say timer stop and let's say result equal to hand play against the opponent hand. And let's say if result is equal to victory, then we will do something else if result equal to loss, then we will do something else else. So in each of these cases, we want to display a message in the screen. So let's create a variable that it is going to contain that message. Let's come up here and let's say a string result message, a string empty. And let's say here, if a string is not empty, result message, we will say something like result message. And we also want some styling. So we're going to say color result message color. And we're going to create that variable right now. A string result message color, a string empty also. And then what we're going to do is that we're going to say if it is a victory, we're going to display the message you won. And for the color, we're going to use green. And let's repeat this here. And here, here we will say you lost and we will use red. And then here we will say draw and we will use the color black. Finally, we need to implement the play again button. So we're going to say on click play again and let's create that method. Let's say private void play again and we will say timer start and the result message should be equal to a string empty. And that should be it. Now let's press Ctrl Shift B and let's see our game. Let's refresh the page and we can play, we can select rock and it was a draw. So let's play again. I'm going to select paper and I lost. And as you can see, we have then, oh, I won. So as you can see, we can use timers to execute methods at intervals and we can use a disposable to dispose the resources of our classes and components. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and let me know what you want me to cover next. Thanks.